And let me take this opportunity to mention, to recall this fact from the schedule that tonight at uh, uh, Institut uh, d'Astrophysique, uh, we will inaugurate a room in the name of Michel Hénon, after which, for those who are interested, uh, François Sèvres will guide us through a tour of uh, the observatoire. So, uh, our, our last speaker uh, this morning is uh, Sferé Arset, and who will uh, talk to us about numerical experiments. Thank you. It's a great honor for me to be here to pay homage to, to Michel Henault. And uh, I've chosen a title which comes from him. I understand that, at least to my knowledge, he was the first person to introduce the phrase numerical experiments in the early 60s. And it seems I have spent 50 years, the last 50 years of my life, pursuing this topic. But that is not the subject of my talk now. I have personally met Michel in 1964 at the IAU meeting in uh, Greece, where I met quite a few other well-known astronomers. And uh, subsequently, in 1967, spring 1967, I invited him to give the first seminar in the new Institute of Theoretical Astronomy in Cambridge. In fact, the talk was the, the main building was not ready, and the talk was given in the observatory, but it was the first seminar. So, uh, subsequently, I spent uh, several weeks uh, working visit in Nice in the early 70s. And uh, I don't have time to comment too much on some of his papers, but uh, the thesis of 1961 was fundamental for my subject. Uh, and together with the second paper a few years later on uh, the evolution of uh, isolated clusters, where he, where he did a very fundamental observation of uh, the nature of evolution of, of, of stellar systems. Uh, this work was so important, considered so important, that actually in 2011 it was translated to English and put on Astro PH by a Belgian student. That is quite a remarkable achievement. Uh, so, uh, his, his, apart from his thesis work, when he, he moved on to uh, consider Monte Carlo methods, and, uh, and there was something called a shell method in 1964, which could be considered the precursor to the Monte Carlo method, which was developed in in 67, uh, and especially in 1970, at the IAU Colloquium at the Institute of Theoretical Astronomy. Uh, so I consider him to be the inventor of the Monte Carlo method, which was taken up successfully by Spitzer and uh, a number of students uh, a few years later with a different approach. And the Henault approach was entirely based on random selection People, even today, don't believe that the Monte Carlo method can work. But uh, already in 1974, in, uh, we made uh, a comparison paper that, that uh, Wiel and, and, and Heno and myself was involved in to compare fast method, the evolution rate of star clusters using fast method, Monte Carlo, and, and gas dynamical method comparing with n-body, very primitive n-body simulations at that time. And it looked like uh, this, was, this, this was done in, in order to make people have more confidence in numerical results. So, so it turns out that that, that paper also contained a, a method which was, which, which was indeed formulated by Eno, and which is used by a lot of simulators today. Uh, but for me, uh, a paper in 69 on the escape rate from star clusters with an arbitrary mass function 
was uh, very important. Uh, and, and there it, was, it emphasized that the effect of masses is very important when you consider contribution to escape. The escape of light, uh, a lighter star, which, which stars give con contribute to the escape rate? And he showed very convincingly that uh, this, was, this was from analytical arguments, uh, that uh, the, the first few heavy stars in a, it, at that time, of course, we considered sm smaller stellar systems, like a few hundred, few hundred stars and so on, particularly. But uh, the contribution from the first few heaviest star to the escape rate of the stars of less mass was very important. And, and it only took uh, maybe eight or 10 stars contribution to equal or exceed that of all of the 500 other stars, for example. So ever since, I have always been impressed by this uh, result and used it, used it for my own uh, estimates uh, and importance of a mass function in a, in a star cluster. Uh, so so uh, uh, the contribution to chaos theory has been, has, has been mentioned this morning, and I need not go in, into that. And periodic orbits is another topic where he, 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 he made another career in the subject. And uh, I'm not a specialist in this field. Along the way, there are several small short papers by Michel Henault where he pointed out fundamental mistakes of other authors, of other papers. Uh, that, that was quite, uh, he had a very sharp logic and could, could detect uh, if some assumption was not the right one to produce some results. And I, I, I know that one PhD was based on assumption which proved which Michel, you know, disproved. Uh, but uh, uh, from numerical work, uh, in, the, in, in the early 70s, he was uh, the first that I knew to emphasize that uh, the so-called method of bullish stir not the so-called method, sorry, the method of bullish stir 1966, it's a high order integration method. Heno believed or told me that this is the most accurate method you can use on any computer. It squeeze out the maximum accuracy. And he said he had converted all the relevant work in his observatory to this method. And I didn't take it up until I had another collaborator in, in the 80s who also emphasized this, and, and now this is what we are using now. Uh, but uh, to uh, maybe I should uh, fin finish er early by saying that, uh, that the, uh, the contributions that Michel Henault made to, to collisional stellar dynamics can be considered to be of similar type as uh, Eddington's contribution to the understanding of stellar evolution. And I think uh, with that conclusion, I will leave it since our time is very short. Thank you. Are there comments or Remarks? No, if not, let's uh, thank our last speaker and uh, all the speakers for this morning. Again. Thank you.